I'm Jess. I like to make weird crafts. I spent the first half of last year crocheting and the second half of last year crafting an enormous tinsel Furby costume. Today I'll be sharing one of my favorite and most affordable crafts, modular origami. Today I am making the largest piece of modular origami that I have ever made. Modular origami spheres or kasutamas make lovely tree ornaments or they're an unusual gift to decorate the home or office, so I'll show you how to make one today. I make most of my origami with sticky notes. They're great because they come in beautiful colors, they're perfectly square, and sometimes stickiness helps the kasutama stay assembled. Arguably, the adhesive nature of sticky notes breaks one of the rules of origami, no glue. So I hope you can forgive me for using the word origami sometimes because it's a little easier to say than kasutama, which is a more accurate word because kasutamas can use glue. I started by creating three of my favorite kasutamas with printer paper to test strength and stability at a bigger scale, since I usually use teeny little three by three sticky note pieces of paper. This right here is a triacus icosahedron kasutama. It's made of sonobe units. I mean, at least this is most of one. I'm missing a couple pieces. This is the sonobe module. Due to the simplicity of the geometry, this sonobe unit was really influential to the beginning of modular origami. The exact designer of the unit remains a bit uncertain, despite it being featured in a few different modular origami books at the time. This is the most stable unit of my printer paper tests, but in my opinion, it is the least challenging and the least interesting looking, so I think I'm gonna go with something else. Yeah. This is an Eagle Star. I was hoping it would work out for two reasons. First of all, the pieces are moderately simple to make, each piece only requiring a couple folds. Also, the spikes look really cool. Unfortunately, this one lost a lot of its stability at a bigger scale, so that rolls out the Eagle Star for this project. Finally, the winner of my printer paper tests, the Chandel Star. This model is by legendary modern modular origami designer Maria Sinezkaya. You can find her work and fabulously clear instructions on GoOrigami.com. I'm gonna go with the Chandel for this project because it has the perfect balance of glamorousness and strength. I really like how the spikes look. This project has been in my craft pipeline for an eternity. I bought this big roll of green paper two years back. It has found its way into a couple different projects of mine. Like I've used it as baby shower wrapping paper. I've used it to map out life-sized Furby stuff. I brought it to open sauce. I've used this paper for a lot of stuff, but today we are finally trying to make the big origami. I'm gonna get to the big one in a minute, but if you wanna follow along, you just need 30 sticky notes or 30 square pieces of paper if you wanna make your own chandelle star along the way. Here's how I fold a chandelle star. You're gonna start with a square paper or a sticky note. In my case, you're gonna fold this sticky note in half diagonally. Line up those two opposite corners exactly on top of each other before creating your crease because we want a perfect 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So there's a valley fold, flip it over horizontally so it's a mountain fold. Fold it in half like you're closing the back cover of a book and then just crease it lightly. Now you see this little triangle we formed at the bottom? We're squashing it open so that the seams lay right on top of each other. Next you're going to crease everything, then you're going to hold on to the bottom half of that squash just that bottom half, and then pull the top half open, and then crease this diagonal line across the whole piece of paper. Lightly fold it in half, hot dog style. You can just crease this lightly, kind of just on the sides, really. Next, we're folding a triangle. We're pivoting from the bottom left corner, bringing the bottom right corner up to meet that center crease line. And crease it real nice. Same thing on the other side. Bottom left corner is kind of the hinge point, and then the bottom right corner comes up to meet that center line we just folded previously. Now that the triangles are folded up, we're gonna crease the whole model on that semi-diagonal line that we created. We're folding another triangle now with the now bottom right corner coming up to meet the crease line, pivoting from the bottom of the crease line. And then you flip it around on the other one, you just kinda line it up. It's a little easier the second time. At this point, there's a seam going up the middle of the unit. Fold that seam in half so the unit ends up looking like this. Next, create a valley fold along the portion of paper that hangs off the edge. I like incorporating a thin ruler. This will result in a perfectly flat fold with all of the layers of paper staying in the right place. At this point, all that's left to do is take this little extra flap of paper and fold it around the triangle. Do it on both sides. Here it is, one completed unit. Uh, make 29 more. Here's the fun part, assembling the pieces. Take the flap of one unit and insert it into the pocket of another. Kind of crease it into place. Grab a third piece. So again, the flaps getting put into the pocket and then 
this yellow piece is going to come around and then it's going to kind of lock into the green pocket. We're going to create a three-sided pyramid. You'll figure it out, I promise. Continue assembling these little three-part pyramids into clusters of five points. And you're just going to kind of continue that until you form a whole ball. It'll, it'll really start to make sense after you're you learn to put a couple pieces together. Or it might not. I know everyone learns differently, but personally with modular origami, I prefer to follow a diagram over written instructions or a video. The diagram instructions for the Chandel Star on GoOrigami.com are really clear and helpful. What I am working on is an extra large one of these. This is made of sticky notes. Each sticky note is three inches by three inches. This is made up of 30 pieces. This is, this is just one piece. What I'm holding in my hands is 12 pieces. Here's how I made the other 18 units. The beautiful thing about this paper is that it's 24 inches wide and I literally just so happen to have this L square ruler on hand that's also exactly 24 inches wide as well. I need to measure this paper to cut out 24 by 24 inch squares. Most origami originates from squares of paper. If this measurement is crooked, the whole unit could come up skewed and they may not fit together as easily. To ensure that I'm getting precise cuts, I'm measuring the 24 inch distance horizontally in a couple different spots, marking with dashes. And then after I connect the dashes with a line of pencil. I continued by batching my steps, measuring and drawing lines all at once and then cutting all at once. Now that all 30 squares are cut, I'm just folding up the paper into the units for the Chandel Star. It's pretty similar, except it does take a little bit longer to line up all the edges because of how big the paper is. And additionally, I just have this ruler on top to weigh things down so that everything stays right in place while I'm folding it. This step of the process there's a lot of layers that you don't want shifting around when you fold so i'm holding down this ruler and pushing all the layers into the ruler and then i move the ruler and i i crease it nice and flat I just tried to assemble like five pyramids. It was difficult. Making the pieces is gonna be fun and easy, but putting them together is gonna be a little stressful. I'll probably need an extra set of hands. Hopefully I got enough paper. I think it's just amazing that I spent an entire weekend folding all of these pieces. It's so great that every piece is folded precisely. I spared no attention to detail in making sure that all these pieces were folded perfectly. Unfortunately for me, assembling the pieces was a failure. I tried putting the pieces together on multiple occasions. I tried having friends help with it. It was no use. The paper was just too thin for this. Don't you dare say I told you so, okay? Let me cook. This thin paper was affordable, okay? I could assemble 11 pieces or so successfully, but I just couldn't get the center layer to hold itself together. I even tried using sticky notes as a sort of removable tape to try hold the pieces together, but it was just not going to happen. It's time for me to start over, this time with poster board. This is gonna be a pain. It's gonna cost me like 30 or 40 bucks on top of the roll of paper I already bought. It's gonna be horrible making all of these folds on much thicker paper, but I am determined to make this happen without glue. Hi, welcome to Dollar General, the Walmart of the food desert. There's only 24 pieces. I don't know how many should I get. There's not a lot of black. Ideally, I'd want it like, you know, Barbie Heimer or Frenemies colors, but I don't, know, I don't know. Here we got the workstation. We got the big pieces of poster board. We got the roller, the scissors, the pencil, the stack of unsliced paper poster board, and all the sliced poster board. So uh, I'm gonna just use some measuring and cutting. <laughs> real quick side project. I just found this bag. You best believe I'm gonna disco tile this real quick. It's fine. Hair 
clip. I'll put that in someone's stocking. Cute. All right, side project done. Thanks. Ah, that's fine. Of course, that corner came off well. Okay. All right, weird crafts update. We have 12 pieces that are folded. I have tried to put them together. They hold, it's amazing. Put the pieces together, it's gonna work. Here's the rest of the paper. It's all measured and cut into a square, but there's still a lot of work left. It is time to get folding. I'm gonna get this thing done. Today is a very special day. I've been folding thick poster board all weekend with rulers and squeegees and all kinds of tools and I've saved the last three pieces of poster board to fold with you! I am about to finish the big origami project. All weekend I've been in sweatpants and fluffy socks folding all of this poster board from the Dollar General here in Appalachia. A couple months ago I finally got down to business and I folded all 30 pieces out of this thin paper. I spent so long getting the measurements perfect, folding. It's all so precise. They're so perfect, but the paper is just too thin to replicate the friction that goes into making a little one. Is this working? Is the flap not in the hole? Stupid triangles. What am I doing? My name is not Big Crafts. It's Weird Crafts. Why am I making this big stupid crap? I just took apart one and I created this this line of them. At a bigger scale, we might have to start by creating a line of them rather than doing from the bottom up because there's like a lack of friction at the bigger scale. Can you not scratch in the box right now? No, you go ahead. This represents many, many hours of failure. Here's where my journey is. This is the size I'm used to making these out of. This is the size. <laughs> I've been making these pieces. Let me show you how I create these pieces. So first of all, out of this thin paper, I cut this to be as big as the poster board. So this is a template so that I just put it on top, I line it up, and I will draw on some of the fold lines. This way I can eliminate making a bunch of preliminary folds. So I'm lining this up best I can. They don't line up perfectly, but just kind of centered it as much as possible. I fold this piece up and I trace it with a lead pencil. I'm holding everything down really securely so that the layers don't shift because precision is the goal here. So I'll just fold this down, fold this over so I can get to this center crease. Go. And then I gotta line it up again. Flip this around, line it up as good as I can. Down. And I just trace the template. You know, I'm sure that there was a more efficient way of doing this, but I don't care. I didn't want to take any shortcuts that would lead to multiple pieces being off center or multiple pieces not being precise because if I mess this up, I gotta buy more poster board. And I just don't want to leave the house. Now that I've drawn those angles on, I'm gonna show you how I make my fold. So if you just fold this over, you might get like some crunching and some unevenness. I want perfect clean lines. I really like using this L-shaped ruler because I can hold it down in two different spots. So like with my elbow and my hand. So I'm just going to put this right up next to that line that I drew. I'm gonna have my elbow on this part of the L, my hand on this. And this is a squeegee that came with like vinyl cutting stuff or like screen printing materials. I'm just gonna take this, go under and push the paper up against the ruler all the way across in a couple different spots. So now we have this. So I'm just gonna fold it over lightly and then crease it up. Same with the other side. Put this across here. Squeegeeing this across. Now for my last, for my last trick, I'm gonna fold these corners in. Hold this right on the line there. Here's this piece. This is where we're at. Now I need this corner to meet this corner. I don't want the paper like getting lumpy or not folding cleanly. So I kind of like, I don't know, get the paper used to go in this direction. Line this up, hold it down, and like really get my fingers in here so that the paper's not curved. Looks great. So, so I just put this right in the right spot. I like to have the ruler here push the paper up against the ruler to get like that first crease so that I can do a really nice sharp crease after. <sighs> Same with the other side. <sighs> Come here. Come here. 
paper. Really, a lot of layers here, so, and I don't want the layers shifting, so I'm really putting a lot of pressure down with my left hand. All right, so this little bit comes around the bend, grease it. All right, this comes up like this. Okay, so here's the piece. So if you can kind of see the lines I drew, I'm gonna put this, so right on that line, holding it down. And I'm gonna pull the squeegee in. Oh, see I shifted. This is why this takes so long. If you shift one bit, your precision's gone. Just fold it up against it. Crease all the way along. Fold it over and then just a little scraper. Pushing in a couple different spots. Can you see the line right down the middle? And this, I need to fold this bit, this last bit in half. <sighs> really? How's that look? Good. Okay. And this one's a little easier. I still use the ruler because I got to find the exact spot down here. I need this corner to fold right on top of this corner. Fold this right on top. Oh. Kind of shifted a little. All right. How's that look? All right, good. Na, 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 na. Okay. There we go. Okay, one last piece. Almost done. Oh my gosh. With 10% camera battery to spare, I'm going to fold the last pieces and get assembling this thing. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Let's fold. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, let's go. All right, here are the pieces. All of them. All oh, should be 30. Mostly pink, a little bit black. Okay, one, two, three, eight, nine. There's nine black pieces. Okay, that'll be great. So I can just spread them out evenly. I'm gonna put the pieces together. Some people wait a lifetime for a moment like this. Goes around the bend. Everything good? Everybody right in place? Yeah, this is gonna work. See, this is the most fun part. Like, this is why I love modular origami. Like, this moment here is so fun. Like, it's just, you've made all these folds, you've done all this work, and it all just fits together. It's just beautiful. The colors are gorgeous. I really wanted it to be all one color, but they only had so much pink. Me, oh my God, after this, new season of The Crown is out. I'll be watching that. Oh, we're gonna have to start working upside down soon. This, coming around like this. Yeah, okay, there's the base. Look at that. You know what? <laughs> it's happening. I mean, I did get this far on the green, though. Pink piece in here. Oh, come here, come here. Oh no, what is the problem? Shoot, oh my God, I thought we were to the easy part. Oh my gosh, what is happening? What is happening? How am I gonna do this? Is this right? Y'all can't even see me, I'm over here. So this piece slips into here, right? Yeah. All right, let's do one over here. I'm trying to keep the black pieces like spread out evenly in the pink one, so I might have to go back and redo some parts. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just making sure I don't accidentally box in a corner with only four points, because there needs to be five. This goes here, this goes here. Oh, we got a lot of weight. The weight is really pulling it apart. I hope I don't rip any pieces. Looking good, right? Oh, am I doing it wrong? Wait, what happened? Ah, oh crap, am I gonna have to, do I need another person to finish this? No, no, no. This is getting done today. It's gonna keep falling apart. I'm just gonna keep putting it back together. Oof, don't rip. How's it looking? We're getting there. Jesus. Oh, wow, it's really coming together. Uh, come here, stay there. Don't shift on me. This is where we're at. <laughs> it's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. Pink piece, pink piece. Ah! 
What is happening? Stop, stop, stop. No, ah, we're so close. Once it's all together, it's really gonna hold, but it's just floppy. We got a floppy coin over here. This goes in there, right? This pops up like that. Am I or, or, an origami master? I feel like I've put 10,000 hours into this particular activity. Does the 10,000 hours have to be within a certain amount of time? Like, does my childhood origami fixation count towards the master status? We're so close. Look at that. Oh my God. Wait, I haven't gotten a good look at this. Looks amazing. Stay there. Stay there. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. I just took a quick break to charge my camera and eat a salad. It was bad. Anyway, we're here. Time to put this thing together. In here. Ugh. Come on, go ahead. Right there. Pink piece goes right in here. You know what? This one is labeled an uneven first try. Let's throw it in, why not? Final structure. No bending. Stop it. Hold it. Oh, come on. <coughs> How's that? Is that ah! No, don't fall. Stop. Okay. We're fine. Ugh. Oh my god, do I have an extra piece? Go, let's undo this last bit. Oh, I hate to do it, but okay. Pull it out. I guess I have one extra piece. Food pink. Just, oh no! No! Okay, it's fine. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Freaking out! Jesus. Come here. No! 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 We are not gonna fall apart now. No! Oh, what is this? Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. The last piece. Bend you into place. Oh my god. Wait. Wow, it's heavy. It's done. Oh no. You're not supposed to be bent. I did it. She's like 26 and a half inches tall. Here it is! I've been thinking about this for so long. It's stunning! Wow! Okay, this is the biggest piece of modular origami I have ever made. That's my crochet chair, that's my cat, and that is a ski for scale. Fit together. Oh my god, it does. The angles, the geometry is all the same.